So on this key, I have now stored two presets, okay? And we can now look at the image to see what happens when I press the first button. I get this look, so that's like a scene file I recall, and I press this button and I get this look. So now you see that offset red can be managed simultaneously for actually two cameras here at the same time. In this video, we'll be looking at shading multiple red cameras. I have two red Komodo cameras and one V-Raptor camera, and they are all controlled by the Colorfly. Colorfly is a multi-camera control panel. It means it's designed to control multiple cameras. And the faders on the controller is why, because these faders easily adjust if you change to a different bank of cameras, they get into position for the lens iris. In today's demonstration, we are also having the Blue Pill. And Blue Pill is a new platform from Skahoy that has a lot of power in it, both in terms of how you can configure and what devices we can control. And the Blue Pill is really the brain. So today, Colorfly talks to the Blue Pill and the Blue Pill talks to the cameras over here. So Blue Pill does the heavy lifting of what you're seeing today. But the focus and all you need to care about is really on the panel here, because in that sense, it's like we have always been doing it at Skahoy. We are making specific implementations for the devices we control. And talking about the devices, the RED cameras, two Komodos and one V-Raptor, thanks to RED, by the way, for lending these uh, to us, they are enabled for whole new use case by this control surface. Normally, you would buy these cameras to do uh, field recordings. Now, you can integrate them in live productions as well. So it adds more value to your RED cameras. You can also mix them, as you see, Red um, Komodos and V-Raptor are mixed on a production if you want to. They are also super similar, so that would be easy. But they do have a few differences and we accommodate to those differences as well, as you shall see. The Colorfly has basically two sections. On the right side, you have the iris fader section. And usually you would use the upper encoder for Master Black. The red cameras doesn't have a designated master black in them, so we have not mapped anything to these uh, knobs today. But the faders are associated with the iris in the cameras. And uh, we'll see, so, so we can adjust the iris on these faders, and if we go to one of the cameras to the exposure menu, or even on the home screen, no wait, it's in the exposure menu, you can see the iris value here can be adjusted, the fader is gonna move along with it, but other than that, the faders are usually where you wanna operate the iris. I just wanted to show you that these are motorized. And on the camera page button on the left side, this is where if I had multiple cameras beyond the three here, if I press this button repeatedly, it would cycle through the pages and the faders would get into position. So you need to take my word for that, but the faders are cool because they enable us to go beyond just five or four cameras as this section is designed to give you access to. If you look at the left side of the Colorfly, this is the standard layout where the upper encoders will give you access to settings. Then this row of buttons will give you a menu so you can select a home settings. These are designed to be the ones that you most typically will use uh, or need to adjust on a production. So then we have exposure where we go in depth with exposure related settings, then exposure to lift, power, slope, and we can even um, cycle over to audio and system related settings. So we'll be taking a look at that. Then we have a row of buttons for preset recall. And these presets are color presets stored in the Colorfly. So you can actually press and uh, hold these buttons to store a scene file. Some, some call them scene files as well. But these are the settings from the CDL. So lift, slope, and power um, are stored in the preset banks, and we have eight, no, 10 of those right here on these buttons. And then we have the camera selector on the lower row. On the camera selector, you can see I go between the cameras, and um, if I go to the exposure menu, you can see we have um, this iris on one of my Komodos and this iris on another one of the Komodos. So let's just um, try adjusting the iris on, on this one. You can see it is stepping, and I want to uh, just um, make sure you understand that the, the lenses we have here are not designed uh, well for broadcast. So in fact, these lenses, um, photographic lenses that we, the, the, that's the one we had access to. But the, the thing that you, you see is that the Red Komodo is able to control these lenses through the lens uh, electrical connection. And if you had 
them in a broadcast context. You could put a PL mount lens on and we have workflows to control external lenses as well. It would be fully integrated if you chose that path. But that's not for today. I just want to mention that these are photographic lenses and this is why they are stepping as you see on the output here. So also as I'm changing this, you see the fader is again moving here, but usually I would uh, change the iris by the faders themselves. Okay, um, if I go to this menu, you see uh, some other settings which uh, might be the same or different. And actually as I am changing between the three cameras I have, then notice how instantly you see the settings. So it's also really awesome how you can compare this. Over here on my web interface, I can see the same settings from all three cameras at the same time. And those settings on the panel will be simultaneously shown in the web interface. So um, I, I could go explore, let's say um, just on this screen here, we have ISO speed on the V Raptor. So if we go to the home screen, you see uh, the exposure mode screen, you have ISO speed right there. If I change this ISO speed to 1600, immediately it's changed here. If I change it on the panel, it's also changed here. So there is a um, really fast synchronicity between the web interface and the panel here. So just to make sure that you understand that because this is um, uh, very useful if we are going to compare settings and so on. And um, Let's just go to the Exposure 2 menu because one thing I mentioned in the beginning is how these cameras are very similar but yet they are also different. And we can see that if we go to some of these um, settings that are related to um, here, the image and the LUT. So we are currently looking at Komodo 2 and now I go to V-Raptor and look at the image LUT settings for this one as well. So if we go between these two, you can see that the highlight roll off is different on these two. It is hot on the Komodo, uh, sorry, on the V-Raptor and it's very soft on the Komodo. If we look at the options, you see that none is one of the options you have for the Komodo. In fact, that is not the case for the V-Raptor. Um, I don't know why none is not possible, but it isn't. And if we um, scroll through the options on the panel here, you can see how we are able to choose all five options that existed for the Komodo, right? All five options here were available to us. If I go to V-Raptor, although it's very, very similar, we will see that the four options are the only ones that I have access to on my panel. So there you see how deep integration we usually do with the devices we want to support that we go all the way down into the individual settings on the parameters the devices are offering us. The CDL is a natural place for you to look if you want to shade your cameras and um, we will need to uh, make sure that we have this, the CDL uh, enabled on these cameras. So this is in the exposure menu here. You can see it's, it's off all cameras at the moment. If I turn it on, we are probably going to see some radical different uh, um, images on, 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 the, um, on the cameras here. Uh, I can't do it on this one because it's currently recording. But if, uh, if you look at these two cameras, it's actually on. Now I want to show you a really, really cool feature, okay? Um, the cool feature is that if I... Um, and notice that all these settings except this guy is the same. So it's HLG and it's a low contrast mode and CDL is on. If I press and hold, we um, now are bundling two cameras together. So this is also a signature Skyhoy feature. You, you can do that on similar cameras from the same device core. And it means that if I change the um, display preset right here, then these values are changed across all cameras, those two cameras being selected. So the highlight roll off was different on the two cameras. So you see that mull in parentheses means that we have multiple values. So we can't specifically tell you what it is, but I can change it on like the, um, the tone map here, high contrast, medium contrast, low contrast. And that's going to change as you see on the web interface here. And also over here, if I change it there, it, it's, it's changing for both cameras simultaneously. And I could do the same for the CDL on and off if I wanted to. So that was just like a little side thing. This can be done on basically all parameters, having multi-device control by pairing them up, holding down the keys. So that's a um, power feature that you now know exists in the devices. Let's move on to the, um, uh, to the uh, lift here. You can see there instantly we had mull because these are different. I can press and hold to reset. So that's a very neat thing to know. And um, I could also enable two of them. So now you see that offset red 
can be managed simultaneously for actually two cameras here at the same time. We also have offset blue, which is a multiple value. But if I turn the knob, then it will use the value of the first camera and then let the other one be the slave of that. So they actually get in sync. You can see they are now both 0.04. So that's also very useful to know that you in this way can um, use this feature to get all the settings on the same page, if you will. I want to show you the color presets now because we have opened up to talk about the CDL of the camera. And um, we currently have a um, certain look on this one. Let's see. Um, okay, this reddish look is it's not pretty. Yeah. I know I'm usually not making pretty images on my uh, videos here, but let's say that I really like this view that I'm currently having based on the, the CDL parameters here, here on, on the, okay, let's just adjust this a little bit, um, just so you can see some values change. Okay, so we go between these, let's look at the slope, we'll just change the slope slightly like that. Okay, so we are all good now, we look here, this is the picture, this is my, my lift, my power, my slope settings up here. Now I want to save those as a preset. So I press and hold this key, it becomes green, green means that it's stored. Now I will change this just slightly, so um, we just turn the knobs a few more times like that, then I press and hold preset number two. So on this key, I have now stored two presets, okay? And we can now look at the image to see what happens when I press the first button. I get this look, so that's like a scene file I recall, and I press this button and I get this look. So essentially what happens is that we are storing these values inside the color fly and we are recalling them to all the parameters as I press those buttons. So that can be done for any amount of cameras that we have here. So let's just see, do we have uh, already? No, we, don't. we also need to do this for Komodo number two. So let's just mess this up a little bit uh, quite quickly here. So I'll press and hold this guy. And then um, we just change this around. I'm sorry for the super green ugly image, but it should prove the point. So once again, for the Komodo camera, we can change between these two. So that's good. So that was the Komodo. What about the V-Raptor? Let's see, this is uh, the one, this is the other. <sighs> I did not rehearse this, okay guys? So I'm now, you know, I'm pulling them together, bundling them, and let's just recall the first one, and then recall the second one. So you see the two cameras are in fact both having their color preset one and two recalled as I'm pressing those buttons. That is pretty cool. You know what that could be used for? You can have scene files that will represent different looks across cameras, and if you match those up, you would be able to change that for multiple cameras at the same time. That's a really, really neat feature. Final exciting thing I want to show you is how easy it is to add these cameras inside Reactor. So Reactor is the software that runs on the Blue Pill. I told you Blue Pill is the brain here, our new platform, and this is the one where you find the device core talking to these cameras. Actually, we have proved that we can do this for, I think, 14 cameras. We have managed like that in a very special configuration. So, uh, and probably many more. So there's really no limits to how many cameras we could involve in this way. And the Colorfly, I'm not even sure we have limits to the paging on the camera pager either. It's just how many you put into the configuration. What you're looking at right now, let's just make this full screen for you, um, is the configuration interface of Reactor. And we are currently running a configuration called Red Cameras and Colorfly made for this, but I really based it on a default configuration. So uh, first of all, if you look over here, we have panels. So the Colorfly is identified and uh, involved in this configuration. Then I have three devices right here. So this is important, right? This is where we basically add a device, say this is the IP address where the device is supposed to be. Try to connect to it. By the way, it's a Komodo type or it is a V-Raptor type device from Red and the system will make this connection. Those devices, they have an ID. The ID, uh, the ID is the device um, ID number right here. So number one, two and three. So it makes good sense, right? We need a way to identify them. This is important when we get over to the configuration because for the Colorfly, all I had to do was to select Colorfly generic. That 
color flight generic is the configuration that splits the panel up into the fader section and the section here for the settings. It's very much the same with many other cameras we are running. Um, that's that's basically it. Um, it's it's very simple because there's default configurations that let you just add new cameras on this camera selector. So you press add device. You you select it manually here. You uh, look up. IED, you can see the models here. So if you want to add a new Komodo, you just press Komodo, add device, you type in the IP address, and then you will have a fourth camera down here. Thanks for watching this video. This is not the only video about red cameras. We have other videos with RCP Pro. You should check that one out because that's the alternative to the Colorfly multi-camera control panel or master control panel because they would work synchronously. So you can enjoy both modes of operation like individual RCPs, one for each camera, which is the typical workflow, or you could go with this master control of the Colorfly. Check out the YouTube channel for that. We also have social media channels, and this is where you will follow us for all the news you want to stay on top of from Skahoy.